So today I'm going to attempt to do an ecosystem setup for like a full community, including a better fish. Now I have done ecosystem tanks in the past now, quite a few actually, and I've had really, really good success. But every time I do one, it gets better and better. And now at a stage where I think if I could show you guys the ultimate sort of version of it, you know, and it should work really good. <laughs> now, what is an ecosystem aquarium? Well, technically all sort of tanks are ecosystems, but what I tend to do is go for like a really low textile route. There's two types that actually do. There's one that has um, mini little filters to push water around, and then there's other tanks that have no filtration at all apart from the plants. That's the one I wanna go for today. And this tank right here is the one that we're gonna be using. So it's two foot long, which is 60 centimeters for everyone else, <laughs> and 1.3 foot in depth, which is 40 centimeters. Now the lighting we're gonna be using is a twin star B line. Now the B line is not aimed at sort of high tech tanks, so that should work really well for this instance because we don't want a lot of tech. We're not using CO2 and all those sorts of things. We're just using plants. Now every planted tank needs a substrate system for the plants to provide nutrients to the roots. For instance, my African river tank that you can see here looks like it's only got sand as a base layer, but that's actually not true at all. Underneath all this sand is an absolute ton of aqua soil, which is what gives the roots the nutrients that they need. And as a result, we get luscious growing plants and really healthy fish. And actually down here on my ecosystem bowl is a really good example of the layering. So yeah, you can see there, look, we've got all the sand and then right at the bottom, we've got all the aquasol that's providing all the nutrients we need. Oh, and a nice little cherry shrimp as well. <laughs> and the plants, look, they're all doing fantastic as well. So what I'm doing now is a method that I've used in the past and it works so well. You use the mesh bags to put the aqua soil in, it locks all the nutrients down low and then you cap the whole thing with sand. This is like a modern day version of a Diana Wallstad method tank which was used with dirt back in the day, keeping it really, really simple. But you know, we have other resources now and other, you know, newer ways of doing it that work just as great, keep it all sort of in check and uh, I find this a, a lot better for balances when you use aquasol versus the dirty tank method. You can get more sort of tannins in the water, more of a browning effect to the water with the dirty tank method. Um, when you do it this way with the aquasol in the bags, the aquasol never comes to the surface so it doesn't sort of spoil the look, but it's still right down there under the sand providing nutrients to the plants for a very long, long time. I've had this method running on a tank before for over a year and the tank looked insane. So we've got six bags there, half filled. So that's a little bit of a trick I learned later on through trial and error, half fill them and then when you lay them down, they go nice and flat and don't bulge up. So that doesn't that means you don't have to put a ton of sand on top because otherwise by the time you've done that, you're gonna be up here somewhere with your substrate. So yeah, half fill the bags and then they lay flat. I'll leave a link to these bags, by the way, guys, in the description if you guys wanna get them. I've, I buy them all the time. They're so good, full plastic. You know, even the um, zippers are plastic as well. So we are all good. Um, there's no rust and issues like that. So we've got the six bags in, don't worry, they don't, they don't have to cover up every last bit of glass. The roots will just, if, even if you plant there, the roots will find a way to the bag and provide the nutrients, everything we need. So on top of this now, we can cap with gravel. So what I'm putting in here now is actually gravel from a driveway mixed with a little bit of sand from a previous setup. It's not a very nice look, don't get me wrong, but we're not gonna be seeing this as the final finished surface. This is just like for bulk, then we get decorative layer on top. Just a quick one guys, if you are really enjoying this content and you haven't already, please click the subscribe and notification bell. It really does mean a lot to the channel. And also it means that you get notified then when I make new videos, which you also might enjoy, hopefully. Right, just click it now then. Now? No, now? I mean, we can just wait, no. Okay, thanks, cheers. <laughs> Right, that's a really good sort of depth there. Now we've got two options. One, you can just keep it like that, plant into that, it wouldn't be a problem at all. Let me go closer, you can see the sort of grain sizes. So you can see there's some sand mixed in with that gravel. Uh, that's just where I had that decorative fine sand on top of this. And as I've taken it out of another set setup, it's just sort of mixed in, which is fine. It's absolutely fine to use again. So I like to recycle stuff as much as I can. And what we can do here is remove it from the foreground, like push it back a bit and put in a nice clean sand. But sometimes it's quite good um, to see like what's going on in there. You'll be able to see all the root systems and everything. It's quite interesting later on. So I think this time I'm gonna leave it. Over on this tank, for instance, I just filled it in with normal sand and um, it looks presentable and neat, but it's not as interesting. See on top of this layer, I'm now going with a black or sort of dark gray sand. I think it should look really neat and presentable. And also it'll grip the plants really nicely as well. It's very dusty. We might get some dust in the water, but never mind. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, this is awesome. We've got a great little start to go from there. Substrate system completely sorted. So now we can put some hardscape in. Now remember guys, this is gonna be no filter at all apart from the plants. You need to leave a lot of space down on the bottom there for all the plants, which means minimal hardscape. Let's go for something completely, it's like the crazy simple. One stick, one rock, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> So I was just messing about a little bit there, putting some rocks in, and then I was gonna add some wood, but now I'm looking at it, I'm like, like how clean is that? It's like a proper, a proper clean tank. I might just go for it. At the end of the day, we, the plants will do a lot of escaping. I can plant them in sort of sections of color and that kind of thing, so it sort of creates points of interest all over. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. Let me try, I'll try a few little bits of wood, see how it turns out. Probably not gonna use any though. Right, I chuck some in. It does look pretty cool, but let's just keep it simple. If I want to add some wood at a later date, I can. I'm just going to use the rocks for now. So let's just get on with some planting then. To start with, I have got some dwarf hair grass here to go in. This is from Tropica. It's classed as a medium category plant. I guess this is just because you need a little bit of knowledge about growing plants to get this to go good. Um, if you just put it in sand, probably not going to fare very well unless there's you know a good amount of fish load providing poop to that sand for nutrients but also lighting as well it does lead, need a sort of medium level of light i would suggest before that goes in though, i want to fill the water level just above this sand and and then it will just plant a lot better it's quite gritty this stuff you can use any sand by the way guys it doesn't have to be what i've used just whatever sand you want and prepping the hair grass is so easy you just got to pull it out look and then it's got like a li oh, I spilled it. liquid that goes with it. And you just open it up, it's like a circle. This one I've had sat around for a long time. It's been sat for about two months, so um, it's not in its best condition, but it will still work. And then you've got like two different sections. You've got the outer part and then the inner part, and you can just split them up into different sections and plant them. And they should come back really, really nicely. It's my own fault, I should have uh, used it quicker, but it's just been sat on the shelf for two months. <laughs> But that's pretty good though, isn't it? Like really good condition considering it's had no care for it at all in that time. Not even refrigerated, I just sat it on the side and it's been hot here in the UK as well. And then next up, it's just a case pushing it into that sand. There we go, just a little patch of it. Don't want anything too big. Just some finer details in that foreground area mainly. Now behind it, I want to put Lobelis cardinal, I think, hang on, hang on. Lobelia cardinalis mini. This is a cool little plant. Um, just one pot of it, but you know, again, it'll go, it goes a long way, doesn't it? That was one pot there. So one pot behind that, because it's a higher plant, so it'll grow taller. Should look really good. Woohoo! Right, we're off to a flying start. Next up is something called pearl weed. If you're new to the channel, it's, it's fantastic. If you've been with me for a while, you know that I can let it get a bit crazy at times. That is exactly what we want in a tank like this though. Fast growing crazy plants. Pearlweed is called a weed for a reason and it's very vibrant and green and I find it very easy to grow as long as you stay on top of the trimming of it, which I will, I promise. <laughs> Right, I've got a really good spread going on there. I feel like that's a good start, but it's hard to tell because the plants are like flopped over. So I'm gonna fill it up now, and then that way I can just sort of see how it's sitting, add more where it needs to go. Way more plants we need, way more than this, just different types as well, otherwise it'll look pretty samey. So we are all filled up, the uh, bubbles are all cleared, the plants are sitting nicely, but I'm, I'm really not feeling this light at all. Why? Does everything look purple? Do you know what I mean? Well, I know why, because if you look in the reflections there, we've got quite a lot of blue and reds. Um, I feel like it should have less blue and reds, more whites and more greens. And that way it'll give us something a lot more like that. So that's the color that I'm seeing. That's how it should be. You know, like blacks are black and greens are greens. And then you come across and it all looks purple. Why does it look purple? <laughs> right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put on the ultra cheap budget light as well and just see what difference we're getting in. Actually, I might as well put it at the same level. And then that makes it an even test. Right, 
Right then, here's the test. That's the Twin Star currently. Like I say, it's got a purplish tinge to everything, which probably is the best lighting to grow plants, but I don't think it looks that great, personally. Right, let's swap it out for the real cheap budget one. Twin Star off, budget on. Well, well, first of all, it's much brighter. And yeah, the colors are just way better. The black is black, the green is green. I'm going with the cheap one. Now, I'm not taking anything away from the Twin Star there. The build quality is absolutely fantastic as it is with all of their lights. It's just that the color and rendition is not for me. That's a personal taste. I know very well that they grow plants amazingly, but I like to have more whites and more of a sort of cooler tone rather than a purpley tone. Does that make sense? More sort of neutral, like white. To be honest, I did find this before in another setup, but on that one, I had a white background and I thought that might have been playing around with, you know, making it look even more purple. So I thought I'd give it a go again on the black, but now nah, I'm sticking I'm sticking with the budget ones. Um, they work so well. Right, now we've got that sorted, it's time to put in more plants. So often to get a really good balance, I find that if you do one thing one side, you tend to do it the other. It doesn't have to be the same amounts or anything, because there's technically more of the uh, limb the feeler on that side, and then just a little touch that side as well, and just keep going. Different uh, sizes and lengths, we could use the same plant if we wanted. I'm gonna mix it up a bit as I go though. Okay, looking sweet. And then in the background, I'm gonna go for this sort of larger leaf plant. This is Hygrophila polysperma. There we go. And uh, it's a really fast growing, you know, it, it uses its nutrients up very fast and it's easy to propagate. So you just trim it up wherever you want and just replant it. And you can keep doing that till it's really thick, dense and bushy. We're really getting somewhere now. The, the water's missing up a bit, that's fine. We can do a water change at the end just to get it clear again. Um, but we need to fill out that back area with higher sort of more dense or thicker stems as well. And this right here is my recent Rainbow Fish uh, River Aquarium that I set up. You can see them all dancing around, going crazy there. Um, but if you look at the back, the limb of the feeler is growing nuts. It's getting huge and bushy. And it's happened very, very fast as well. So it's because they're so close to this top light system that I've built. And um, I'm just gonna just pluck some of them from further down and then I can just put them in, in the new tank and they'll just keep growing. They'll keep growing double in there and then start a new colony, is that the right word? I don't know, <laughs> of even more in the other tank. Oh, we are filling up, we're filling up. There's quite a lot of greens in there. Let's go with a few more sort of reds and uh, orangey sort of tones in this mid uh, foreground area here. Nothing massive, but just, you know, just to break it up that sort of sea of green a little bit. Right, I'm thinking that that is looking fantastic. There's so much different sort of colors and that. It's all gonna grow brilliant and thick as well. As it grows, keep trimming, keep replanting. But for now, I need to sort of scoop out all that crud at the top. And then also just need to take the water right down and back up again and actually make it crystal clear. Always remember to add something to your water, like to take out all the chlorine. And chlorine means the heavy metals. I use this one here. This is API's Aqua Essential, works so well. Look at that, crystal, it looks like there's no water in there, doesn't it? But there is, I can assure you. Um, what I like to do now though, is put in some floating plants. Floating plants are absolutely brilliant for a tank like this. Um, there's a lot of light going in there, so we wanna be able to use that light to grow the plants, don't get me wrong, but then it will potentially cause algae if there's too many nutrients in the water column as well, which there won't be for a while, because I haven't got any fish in there right this second, but floating plants for me is a must in all tanks. And I'm gonna go with a bunch of red root floaters because I'm absolutely loving them at the moment. Oh, they look so good. Just adds another sort of layer of redness, plus all those little color pops we've got, we've got going on everywhere else. And I think we're set. In fact, I'll just put a few bits of salvinia as well, which I've got over in this aquarium, look. And this will actually have beneficial bacteria all over it as well. Some people don't really like it when you move one thing from one tank to another, 
but I'm happy with all my tanks, so that doesn't bother me at all. There we go. Look at that. So that is the tank set up and looking really, really nice. Now, what I'm going to be doing now is adding fish, shrimp, snails, the lot. Hear me out, some of you are thinking, that tank isn't cycled. Well, what I like to do is something called a fish in cycle. That means you put the fish in straight away. If you've not heard of that before, it can sound quite scary, but I've been doing it a long time now to all of my tanks. Now, if you're gonna do this method, you have to be willing to do water changes every day, have a test kit available, and just be very observant of your tank. So the daily testing is gonna show us if there's any ammonia or nitrite and that kind of thing. Um, there will be, but it'll be in such small increments that it won't be detrimental to the fish, and by the time you change the water, everything's all good, although you are providing a food source for new beneficial bacteria, and that is the key. Some people don't like it, it's fine, it's their personal opinion. I've done it lots of times, like I say, and it's worked really well. So that's what I'm gonna do here, but first of all, I need some fish. Let's go to the shop and see what we can find. Where are you going? Everyone, you know Matt. I think you know Matt, don't you? This is Matt. Matt's just had a baby, so he's not in his work attire. Not Congratulations, Matt. Thank you very much. <laughs> Non-uniform day today. <laughs> So I come to get a better fish, obviously, um, but first of all, I wanted to talk about a non-fish fit. So I come to get a better, so I come to get a better fish. But first of all, I just want to talk to um, an expert here about a fish in cycle because some people are not happy about it. Sometimes, most of you are. I mean, let's face it, the majority of the time, non-internet people put <laughs> fish in their tanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the ninety-nine percent of people who come in here who set up a fish tank are fish in cycling and if you use the right products and set it up correctly there's really no issues with it, it works. and you don't put a hundred fish in straight away yes exactly yeah if you go putting loads in and then you feed them four times a day <laughs> um then yeah it, it doesn't problems, go yeah. wrong it yeah. doesn't go wrong which is evident of you know mature filters and things obviously we matured the filters but it is it's an easy thing to do i'm pointing at that because recently we set up i'll show you these in a minute because we might as well because <laughs> it's, it's good to look at and it's a good example as well all, all of my tanks, I always just put the fish in straight away. So, but you've got to be responsible with it. You've got to be testing your water every day, at least for the first few weeks, uh, because you will start to get rises in ammonia and nitrite and things like that. But as long as you're doing those water changes, the, uh, the actual toxicity levels would never get high enough to harm any of the fish. I said that really well and really fast, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, exactly. And the things like <laughs> the I've done products. it so many times. Yeah, you've done it. Yeah, just, <laughs> just step one, step two. Step yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you use the right products as well, so using things like bacteria boosters yeah. and you know, quick starts and stuff like that, They'll all get API that. Quick start. Yeah, <laughs> they'll all get that seed of life in there, which yeah. then promotes the growth of everything else. So everything else gets broken down with it. So, yeah, yeah. I've never, I've had more problems with fish lust cycling with customers. It's very difficult. Isn't it's a it? really it's... difficult thing unless you're a, unless you're a sort of lab grade professional. The problem is, ends up they pour too much ammonia in, and yeah. then their nitrate goes through the roof, and then and then it goes down too far, and, and then yeah. Oh, okay. And then how do you get the right amount of ammonia for the first stocking of fish as well? Like that's that's just a guess, isn't it? it yeah, pretty much. So, you know, yeah. There's 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 figures out there that are sort of chucked around, but I can't see that any of them are definite like definite figures on it. So yeah, most of the time you might end up with a bacteria die off because you've put in. I don't know, enough bacteria for 100 fish, you go and add 10 fish, yeah, and, and then, then all of a sudden they haven't got a food source. So mm. the bacteria will all drop off and all die off, and where are you? Well, actually, you're back at fish in cycling. Yes, because yeah, because you've killed you've, off the bacteria yeah. initially, and it's going to build up again steadily, and yeah, okay. Yeah. So we're not suggesting our way is right. You're not even in the shop, Matt. <laughs> now you are. Hi. Was I not in the shop for the whole thing? I don't know. Most of it. Yeah, you were. Oh, you were right. stood there. You just leant back. But that's fine because I'm <laughs> going to be filming stuff and putting B-roll over the top. This bit isn't going in, by the way. <laughs> but it literally but, is. But it probably will. Genuinely, it isn't. I oh, know you're saying that I want to. <laughs> okay, so all of that's good. So let's just go and get the better fish. Um, you've got a load in. Matt wasn't here yesterday, but the rest of the shop, the rest, not the shop, but the workers, the guys in the shop told me they've had a delivery yesterday of fish. So I can't take them, but some of them, are looking so good. We'll show all of them, but one of them I've seen that's been here for a while that no one wanted, but I think it's really nice. Um, he is cool. He okay, is really let's go. Cool. So in this tank here, Matt, we seem to have quite a few. Are these not? They're not new, actually, are they? Uh, that one's new. That one's not. So we've got that one. We've also got a nice clown one. Is it clown? No. Uh, it might be a koi. We call it a koi or a Nemo. Possibly. Nemo. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Not clown. So the orange one. <laughs> well, it's a clown, isn't it? I yeah. Suppose. True. Yeah. Um, and then you've got a Hellboy. I can't remember all their names now. There's so many. But the Hellboy is. Red face. One. Yeah. My Red Hellboy face, is no that. more. No longer a Hellboy. Oh uh, yeah. That's the thing. Face isn't just it? isn't the same. 
I mean, that's because it, you, we don't know what age they're at. So, no, they're so. all really young fish, and as they mature, the colorations change, change massively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we had a white and black speckled one in here years ago, well, not years ago, but he almost went blue and yellow by the time he was finished, with still the white and black speckles. He was beautiful, but yeah, one of our staff members had him, and he didn't look like the same fish. It's quite funny because I've had people say to me, that's not the same fish. I'm like, I promise you yeah. it is. It was actually one of my goldfish as well. Oh, really? Yeah, they, yeah, they do um, change. Ember, he went from being like red and black to completely bright orange all over. Yeah. And that was, again, it's just age, isn't it? Yeah, so. that's it. They're, they're growing into their colours until they're adults. They're going to keep growing into their patterns and colours. Okay, so down here, though, is the better fish that I'm after. Yeah, he is what a you, dude. He's so cool. Like... Not as flary as some of the others, you know, it's not got the big, big fins, but I quite like the short fins, you know? Yeah, I think, I, personally, I like the short fins because they do, generally, for me, they do better in most aquariums. Yes, um, I've heard that, because the genetics are stronger, yeah. you get you get better better yeah. life out of them, do you exactly. know what I mean? Exactly, you know, the long fins and all of the sort of fancy finned ones can have more ailments and more problems, I suppose you would say. Is that just because they've been uh, bred genetic, just for the genetics of the fin, Nothing yeah. else. Yeah, they've, sometimes it's that. Sometimes, obviously, tank mates are a lot easier to find when you've got a short fin fighter. Yes. Um, so when you've got a long fin fighter, you have to be a lot more specific on who you're putting in with them. But with short fins, like you can still put a lot of the sort of I wouldn't say nippy fish because that'd be wrong. I wouldn't go for aggressive fish, but okay. you can certainly be a bit more sort of blasé about what other fish you're keeping with them. That's cool. And actually, that one's been there for quite a while, isn't it, Matt? Yeah. With fish as well. And I'm only putting small fish in with him. So that is brilliant. That means yeah. we're all gonna, we're going to be all good. He'll be perfect for it. Yeah, definitely. I'd also like to try, and I think we're going to be all right, um, so a few shrimp as well. Cool. A few ram's horns. Nothing major. Yeah. It's like 10 cherries or something like that. A few ram's horns. I think that'll be a really good start for the tank. And um, it should progress great after that. Oh, I'm so excited nice for how this one's turned out. Yeah, it yeah, should be good. Like all right, back them up. Oops. <laughs> so we've got the fish, we've got the shrimp. Next job is to put them into the tank so they can tap track, mate. To be honest, it's pretty much the same at the moment everywhere because it's so warm in the UK and it's so warm in here as well. But, no, but just as a precaution, we'll put them in, turn the lights off and they can tap track, mate. He already looks happy. So one of the main reasons I'm adding fish straight away is that because there's no filter in this tank, we need fish in there to actually get water movement. You know, any fertilizers, waste, every, just distribution of heat, everything is gonna be done by those fish in there. So at the moment, we've got a better fish, we've got some shrimps and some snails. That's not gonna be enough, really, but you don't wanna overload the system either. So this tank here is my rice fish paddy field tank. You can see there's some of the adult rice fish. Now there's been some babies born in this, which I only recently found out actually because it's quite the it's a mass of everything down there but that was deliberate so down here look we've got some adults some babies the white ones are from a different tank but those baby ones well they're not so babies anymore so much babies anyway and um, they're from this tank so hopefully we can get that population just to continue but i think there's a good number of fish there to put in our nice 60 centimeter aquarium uh, it's not going to be a barely any bio load but they're going to look good they're going to be interesting they're going to have babies provide food eggs that everything like that as well so the perfect sort of candidate really and these guys have now been acclimated for plenty of time so they can go in it as well okay so first of all then here go the rice fish in you go guys come on <laughs> out you go there we go good little number there look that's going to barely scratch the surface of bio load so to start with look they're just going to kind of poodle around um, until they get comfortable, which won't take too long at all, to be honest. And then next up is the shrimp. One of them's trying to escape already. Shrimp and the snails. We've got two um, neurite snails in there as well. And we've got some, come on, all of you. This is, this is silly now. There is a new home for you. <laughs> there we go. Is that all of them? No, nope, we've got some snails still. There we go. Bit of crud in the water as well, but that won't hurt. And if your ram's horn snails land upside down, be sure to flip them over. I think these guys are absolutely fine though, to be honest. I'll keep an eye on them. They can self-right, but they, they really, really struggle to. Look at this, look. All of the rice fish now, sort of going everywhere. Oh, it's already looking awesome. But it's now time for the star of the show. Are you ready, buddy? Your new home awaits. And in he goes, hopefully not to gobble up all the uh, shrimp straight away. Oh, he looks fantastic. Yeah, I'm really glad I went with those colors. 
not too shy initially, which is good. He's uh, taking his time. He didn't just run away and hide straight away, but he's obviously feeling a bit comfortable there. Um, it's quite bright on camera, so let's see. This is how we're actually seeing the tank. Yeah, I'd say that's about right. So there's plenty of cover for him, and remember, these are... Uh, these, these floating plants are going to be like covering the surface in basically a week, if that. So he's got plenty of shade if he wants it, like he can tuck under any plants. You should give him five minutes, he should be more comfortable. Oh, straight away, he's going after that shrimp. There wasn't any shrimp in his tank. There's one right... Yeah, he left it though. He didn't chase it for too long. Hopefully the shrimp are going to be all right. I mean, there's plenty of places to hide. So we should be okay. So that is all the fish, the shrimp, the snails in, and now is the perfect time to add in this product here is the one I use, Beneficial Bacteria, a quick start from API for me. And um, this isn't like a sponsored video or anything, it's just, this is what I use. It's what I've always used and never have any problems with my fish in cycles. So it's Beneficial Bacteria, you put it in and it gets the whole cycle process going way, way faster and it provides initial beneficial bacteria that will start colonizing everywhere. And even in your substrate, on your plant, you know, everywhere, it's such good stuff. It's like magic. It's like the cheat code to start in aquariums, in my opinion. So I'm just going to shake the bottle right up before we use it. And then just follow the instructions on the uh, back of the bottle. For this size tank, it's about three capfuls. Final one at the back. There we go. Now we've got no filter, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a stir. And that should just get everything started beautifully. Right, we've got quite a bit of action going on now. Look, we've got shrimp flying all over the place. Uh, the better fish is completely comfortable and just cruising around everywhere. The rice fish, they're going to the surface quite a bit. They're just sort of finding their bearings, but they're, they're, but they're not just like a surface dwelling fish. They're, they're an all over the tank fish. And the neurite snails have both self-righted and are huddled in that corner, making a, a nice little home for themselves. Ah, oh, the better fish though, looking good. He's fine with the rice fish. I knew he'd be fine with the fish because obviously he had similar sized fish in with him and they were all absolutely fine. So that's normally a very good sign if you're trying to pick a better fish. If it's with other fish, it'll probably be all right with your fish. He's really stunning though, isn't he? He's a very cool looking fish. That little sort of yellow on the bottom fin, um, Dalmatian-y look to him. And then a blue haze or sort of, you know, a little bit of detail on the top. Beautiful guy. So just because we finished building a tank doesn't mean that the work is done, far from it. This is where the real work actually starts. We wanna make sure the health of the fish is the top priority, which is why you have to do this daily testing and if needed, daily water changes. To be honest, with the amount of planting in here and such a small bio load, it's not likely that I'm gonna to need to do a water change every day, but I will still test just to make sure. And I suggest it's something that you guys do as well. If you haven't got a test kit, get one. I've got the, uh, hang on. I've got the API Master Test Water Kit. You know, get what one you want, but this one's like the liquid. It's very accurate in terms of colors and you can do it to like 0.1, I think, of PPM, 0.01. I don't know, it's very accurate anyway. But you do need something like that to be able to do this cycle. Otherwise, you're just taking too much of a risk. To be honest, you could just change water every day for two weeks and, you know, dechlorinated tap water, that is. And if you do that, there probably isn't any need to test because you're just constantly diluting it. There's no chance of anything building up. But, I mean, you should have a test kit anyway, shouldn't you? If you're keeping fish, it is kind of your duty to spend a little bit of money on making sure that, like, everything's good for them every now and again, doing tests and things like that. Anyway, this is nowhere near it for this tank. There's loads, loads more to do. This thing's going to grow in no time, maintenance sessions. It's just going to evolve more and more and more and just be even more interesting. Get lots of microfauna and everything everything like that in the tank as well. So with that said, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon. I think I'm pointing the right way. Yeah, so next time there's an episode is uploaded, you'll get notified. You know how YouTube works. And I'll just see you guys on the next one.